All right, we are going to use calculus to find the volume of this solid. The base of this solid looks like this right here. Uh, y values are between x squared and one. And cross sections perpendicular to the y axis are squares. So let's try to get some kind of basic drawing of what's happening going here. If we look at the xy plane, y equals x squared would look like this. Y equals one would look like this. So we're talking about this region right in here being the base. And kind of popping out of your screen here, we're gonna have squares coming out of here that are gonna make a solid. This is not necessarily my forte, but if we wanna to try to do this in three dimensions, here is our base. It's a parabola opening in the direction of the y-axis. And we have these cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis, and these are squares. Add all of those little squares up, and that's gonna form some kind of a solid. In terms of calculus, our volume is going to look like the sum or the integral of the area of one of these squares here. And you'll notice that the thickness of each one of these squares over here is dy. You might see that a little bit better on this picture. The thickness of each one of these squares is just some infinitesimally small amount oriented in the y direction, so we're just gonna call that dy. Now we can immediately say, since we're integrating with respect to y, we can see from this graph that the smallest value of y is gonna be right here at zero, and the largest value of y is going to be right here at y equals one for this region. So we can immediately put in our limits on y of zero to one. Now as far as the area of the square goes, we know that the area of the square is this sort of length or base or whatever you want to call it here, squared. You'll notice that the base of each one of these squares is whatever this x value is on this parabola times two. So if we wanted to write down what the area of our square was, it would be two x squared which we could simplify by squaring both the two and the x. But this is not all that helpful because we want an integral with respect to y. So the question is, do we have some relationship between x and y that would allow us to get rid of this x squared and replace it with something in terms of y? Well, the answer is yes. This curve right here has the relationship y equals x squared. So what we can do is take this x squared and replace it with a y. Now we can go through the process of integrating, plug in our upper and lower limits of integration, and you will simply get an answer of two. And that's the end of that problem. I hope that works out for you. I hope that that helps. I will see you in the next video.